now we're recording. All right, thank you. All right, welcome everybody to today's technical steering committee meeting. Uh, everybody is welcome to participate in this meeting so long as you abide by the antitrust policy and our community code of conduct. Um, <clears throat> a few announcements as we kick off here. Uh, the Brazil boot camp is growing ever closer. Um, I don't know if Karen is on to speak or maybe I see Daniela is on, maybe. Uh... I can actually go with this one. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so the main thing that we needed before I was willing to pull the trigger on the Brazil boot camp was having enough session leaders. And we now have enough session leaders. Now my big call to the TSC and all of our um, project maintainers is to help us make sure that they're all on board for your project. So if you'd like to see your project represented at the Brazil Boot Camp, let me know. I will be contacting a bunch of y'all individually tomorrow, but this is about making sure that they have their getting started materials and things of that nature to get people um, up to, um, so that they're able to get started and start um, contributing to your uh, project. So that's what we're working on right now. And that's that's kind of a, a train the trainers uh, call you're looking for. Yeah, kind of a little bit more mentorship. And um, one of the cool things that you'll get out of it is it's probably pretty likely your stuff will get translated into Portuguese. So um, they're expecting about ninety five percent of the of the attendees to be from Brazil, and so they're going to be it's going to be more in Portuguese than English, and they're going to be translating the materials as well as getting people started on it. Okay, thank you. So uh, everybody heard that, so please reach out for your uh, respective project maintainers or contributors to, to get involved there. All right, Cloud Interop Certification Task Force. Uh, that <laughs> That's also me. Um, we're just now starting our journey for doing Cloud Interoperability Certification, and I wanted to um, issue out a call for volunteers who want to participate in that process. Um, at the very first portion of this, we are going to be doing, you know, some of the more boring things like governance and just plain old project management. But eventually, we need to make sure that we check in with all of our projects about what the certification process itself will look like. And so I know that some of y'all are highly opinionated um, on this for good reasons. And I think that we should start talking about that now. And I'll be posting all of this to a portion on the wiki. It's going to be public, but not linked to on the menu at the beginning, um, simply because of the fact that it's all logistical aspects at the beginning. And then once it gets a little bit more ironed out and we don't have to worry about expectation management, then I'll make it on the menu. Um, but at the beginning, I'm just going to have it. It's going to be there. It's going to be public. It's just, there's going to be a lot of blank pages. <laughs> So, okay, and I, I don't recall, has this been discussed in earlier TSC meetings or is this as of today? This is one of my goals for the year. So um, is to, uh, we're going to be working on a surface provider certification as well as a cloud interoperability certification. These things are, uh, the certifications are typically run internally um, simply because there's a huge logistical uplift for her. Um, LS staff to do. I just wanted to bring it all out as early as possible to the TSC that we're doing it so that um, people can have um, buy in and contribute to it earlier rather than later. Okay, so yeah, and as you get those materials together, maybe just having uh, at least a few lines describing what this is somewhere would be. Right. What we'll do is with like with all the task force, we'll be doing regular updates to the TSC and recruiting from it. Um, but, you know, the main difference between work groups and the task force is that something um, it's basically deliverables from my team. And so there are deliverable things that we have to, you know, keep moving and keep attached to. So it's a little bit different in that it's not as open and self governing. Um, because they are things that we have to accomplish. So we'll be doing that the entire time. Okay. <clears throat> so, well, um, I, I can appreciate that, but shouldn't, you know, the direction come from the TSC? 
the direction in regards well, to, to even to do these things, right? I mean, I, I don't have a problem having a discussion about what the right thing to do would be, but it seems like you've already decided. The right thing to do in regards to what aspect? I don't know what interop certification means, to be honest. I mean, so, I, I can imagine, but I don't know what it means. Well, one of the things that will be happening is for each of the projects themselves, they will be determining what their actual test nets are and what those certifications will be. We have to put together the logistical aspects like the legal contracts, the um, figuring out where things are going to go, all those different kind of aspects, which normally the TSC and the individuals do not do. Okay, so why don't we do this? Can you just please put together what the what the proposal is for this general work area, and then we can have a more structured discussion in, of it through the TSC, and then it should be clear whether or not this is uh, an initiative that uh, the TSC is supportive of. Sure. I'm confused by that, but um, I will talk with Brian about it. Great. Okay, Project Lifecycle Committee. Uh, Arno has uh, kicked off some, some mails about this, which we've linked to in the agenda there. Uh, Arno, is, th is there anything that uh, you'd like to uh, call out at this point? No, not really. I mean, I was, if you follow the link, you'll see I basically just sent an email. I assume people have seen this on the TSC list, asking for people who are interested to be part of this smaller group. Just to be clear, I mean, you know, to everybody, the intent is not to solve all the issues, is to just, you know, kind of pre-true issues. And so my, my next step will be, and so I think we already have quite a significant number, more than I expected, but that's fine. Uh, my, my intent is to next start listing all the issues that I think we have to tackle. And I have actually, you asked me last time, how long do you think it will take? And I'm thinking, you know, I want to try to, prioritize the issue, list all the issues we think we have, prioritize them, and hopefully make progress incrementally, you know, not try to come back to the TSC with everything, okay, we've been working for three months, this is the result, but instead try to have a more piecemeal approach where we can tackle issues independently as much as possible. And so last time, for instance, we talked about the project, so project, I say, well, I don't really want to, to copy it, to resolve or are trying to discuss this. But now I think, you know, I thought afterwards, well, it, we, there is no harm in having that on the list of issues if we just don't get entangled in this to the detriment of, you know, addressing any other issues that are probably easier to address. And so that's kind of my thinking now. Yeah, thanks for that. And I, I think that uh, a smaller group will be a faster moving group. So um, uh, I think that. Hey, just a quick question, Arno. So I know that the Rai put together the wiki page for it. Um, should we just start using that to start listing some of the issues that we should be talking about? Yes, absolutely. That's, the, okay, that's I what I plan on going in today and start to add some things in there. So. Yeah, feel free to do that. That's exactly what I want to offer to everybody to do. So. I think that's good. Thanks. And uh, I will certainly appreciate at least uh, pointers to uh, how these things are resolved in other organizations like uh, Apache or others. Yep. Cool. Uh, sorry, where is this uh, page on the wiki? Well, I'll send an email. I mean, yes. uh, we have a list. And for now, I just list the people who have volunteered, but so we so can explain. So Rai posted a link in that email thread. Okay, sorry, yeah, I'm not at work right now. I don't have access to my work email, but I'll do okay. so it. Okay, it's in the Thanks. email thread. Okay, Thanks a bunch. Sorry for the question then. No, it's okay. I'll add it to the TSC chat on robot chat. Thank you. All right, uh, next up here we have, I think, the, uh, the uh, PSWG discussion. 
So the update uh, was up around this time last week, which I hope people have had a chance to take a look at. And then Mark wants to lead a discussion about uh, the future direction there. So I will hand things over to Mark. And maybe if we can first hit, uh, if there's any open questions on the, the update as written and then move into the directional part after that. Sure, does anybody have any questions on it? Okay, I'm not hearing anyone. Um, <clears throat> so overall, after we got the paper out, um, we sort of waffled or, or wandered a bit trying to figure out what to do next. Um, and I, I sort of wanna, we haven't, we settled on one thing and then um, Stack, we were asked to look at working with Stack and so that took us in a different direction for a month or two. So now that we're, um, that fell through, we're back to, do we work on Providence document for supply chain? Or, you know, what is it that the TSC wants from us and that other projects want from us? Um, we haven't done a lot of cross project, cross project or working groups or SIGs. Um, and a lot of, you know, there's a lot of new SIGs since this group was first formed. And to me, it makes sense that we should probably be off working with subject matter experts. Um, but in the meantime, participation on the calls has dropped down to two or three of us. Um, Hoke and Hui from Caliper is there, and Fippin and I. Um, Todd Little from Oracle is there sometimes, and sometimes Arish. Um, and some of the attrition is um, also Attila and uh, Imre will join, but they're somewhat sporadic at this point. So it's a question of what can we do to re-energize the group, but part of also, you know, what do people want from us? We had, had the Fast Fabric people come and talk with us. And, uh, you know, that seemed to energize the group a little bit. Um, I think, you know, we're all engineers and we like actually solving problems, not just writing documents. So is there a way we, you know, people see us working more with group, you know, other, other projects or going off and just defining things going forward? So. Let's do that as a basis for a start of of the discussion and let people hop in. You know, I think one other thing to, to consider is we, we have the uh, uh, sort of completion criteria. I can't remember how we phrase it in, in the working group charters. Uh, so we should also think about, you know, declaring success and maybe stepping back for a bit and then later reconstituting a similar group. Uh, that's certainly one option. Uh, I would think that continuing with the working group as is might be more productive than shutting it down and trying to spin it back up later. Uh, but I think we should always keep in mind that uh, concluding things is an option that we have. We've concluded so working groups in the, in the past. Like we've concluded the major white paper that was oversweeping over all of Hyperledger. So I, I don't know that this group is done. I mean, you know, one of the reasons that we established it in the first place was because I think there was a, I think a, a sort of an expectation that at some point, you know, people would want to have, you know, some sort of benchmarking. And what we've defined thus far is a set of metrics that you would measure, um, not how they are measured necessarily, right? Because we don't actually have, I mean, I think, you know, taking a look at Caliper or other sort of tooling and actually defining a specific test that can yield consistent results is the kind of thing that I think they were, uh, you know, potentially going to engage with Stack on. But we aren't going to do that, apparently, because those guys have sort of disappeared. Um, I, th <clears throat> I think, you know, I think it's still on, uh, you know, the working group's shoulders to sort of start to think about what does a benchmark look like or what, you know, if, if we're using Caliper, for instance, to measure performance of um, a particular framework, right, 
Um, are we able to sort of do consistent things so that you could define a benchmark that could be measured consistently across the various frameworks? So I, I, I you know, personally, I'd like to see a little bit closer um, uh, sort of look at you know, where are we with Caliper? Where are we with Caliper in terms of, does it support all of the, um, certainly the active frameworks um, and, and, you know, some of the others as well. Um, and if not, you know, what can we recommend that be done about it? And I would also, I, I, I'd like to see us get to the point where we could actually just start defining uh, some benchmarks that people could, um, you know, reasonably, use to make decisions because i mean i don't know about you all but i get a lot of questions from uh from clients and from analysts and so forth about performance and scalability capabilities of the various platforms and um you know i i, I think you know we should get out in front of it As we finished the uh, the white paper back in the fall, I remember there were there were a few things that we had as as potential next steps, mm -hmm. and a lot of those were around faults, uh, because one of the things that makes blockchain special is its um, fault uh, resilience, mm. and I think if uh, you know there were a couple different directions that the working group thought might be useful to do there. One is, is around defining metrics with respect to faults. Uh, and another would be working on uh, workloads that, that intentionally introduced faults. I think what's particularly valuable about that is that if, if an architecture is designed for the happy path, but any sort of noise in the system makes it grind to a halt, that's gonna be something that's important for everybody to understand. Uh, and it's also supposed to be something that is unique to blockchain stacks, or at least uh, better about blockchain stacks than other sorts of related technologies. So I think that at least gives two options. One is is a little bit more of the, the paper side of defining metrics around those spaces. And then the second would be more uh, the hands-on work of, of introducing faults into some sort of workload. Hi, this is Vipin. Um, I do support the, uh, you know, Chris's thoughts and yours, um, Dan. Uh, the thing is, in terms of the, in terms of the need for the working group, I think I've always heard that everybody is looking for some objective numbers, uh, which means either it's run by an objective party or set up in such a way that it can be measured objectively. So for that purpose, uh, we said, I mean, since the load on the system depends on the, uh, on the actual payloads going in and the pattern of use and some of the more useful uh, stuff that's come out of, let's say the, settlement, uh, post-trade settlement work that uh, Accenture and um, DTCC did for uh, Corda and uh, DAH, uh, we said that we should choose a specific uh, use case. One of the use cases we said would be uh, useful was the provenance one. And we started on it a little bit, but we never really uh, settled on it. The, you, the choice of the use case is not just to describe the use case, but also to then run it in, um, in uh, Caliper or some such tool. The uh, natural uh, things, uh, natural projects that we would be associating with would be supply chain uh, based project like grid or uh, something else like that. So there has to be some, to Mark's point, uh, some subject matter experts uh, that come to this group. Uh, so that is the first thing. The fault injection part 
in fact, Imre and gang are the fault uh, gurus. And uh, we also have a, um, I wrote something about chaos engineering and the blockchain on Medium, which started off this uh, investigation, but I want to make it very practical because the indie guys have created a chaos framework around it, around uh, the you know the practice. So that is the you know second thing, but all of this requires engineers and resources. With three people or four people showing up to the working group is is not going to be enough. So people have to uh, say you know how practical is it to embark on these projects uh, without, you know, without there being full-time resources um, on this project. Maybe one of the things would be for uh, interns or somebody to do this from, you know, a company who's interested in a uh, benchmark. Uh, the last thing is without a testnet, that can, can be spun up. I know, Chris, that you think that that testnet should be under, you know, should be spun up by companies who are interested in these benchmarks, but also we kind of talked about it quite a bit here in terms of the CNCF testnet. Uh, I, I know that, you know, things that didn't go well or whatever, uh, and we don't have such, uh, such a rig that can be easily spun up to do this running of the caliper itself and even of course in an advanced stage to do chaos on that testnet starting with chaos on testnet then of course uh, enlarging that to go to production type systems anyway uh, i've said enough here so so I think focusing on the lack of participation is the wrong thing to do because, I mean, for a working group to be successful, you need the clearly defined problems to solve, and then you need the right people to participate. Yeah, but you can't have this latter unless you have the, the, the former. So I think what's happening is, you know, you started with a working group, you, uh, you figured out a, a, a problem to tackle quickly, and there were enough people thinking, hey, this is an interesting problem, I want to participate in solving it. And you issued the paper, you were very successful in doing that in actually fairly timely fashion. And now you find yourself with a really clearly defined problem to solve, and so people lose interest, which is not surprising. So I think it's really a matter of, whether there is a problem that you can define. I, I think, you know, um, I think there is no shame in saying, hey, we've done what we could. Nobody has a, another problem to solve for us and we should just shut down. I think it's better than trying to solve a problem to solve just for the sake of it. But, you know, in line with what uh, Chris was touching on, I don't know that there is no other, there's nothing else the group could do. And so I agree with them that, you know, it's a bit of a challenge at this point, but the, the, you would have to see, okay, with the basis you've already created with the first report, what, what is the next step you could go, you know, that would still be platform independent and would still provide some guidelines at least as to what it would take for somebody to set up a framework test bed. Um, Hi everyone, it's Alex from Suramitsu. I might have one proposal. Uh, I don't know if uh, that could be interesting, but maybe since we have a, a white paper and, and the framework, all the platforms that are under the hyperledger could try to perform the measurement and then submit the reports together with the data to the working group and the working group can review that and say whether the, the measurement was uh, done in a way that is acceptable and then say, yes, uh, you know, this is the result for a particular plat platform. Uh, I know that there are a lot of open questions, but by having maybe a, a very ambitious goal, 
uh, we will also uh, find ourselves discussing those things that are maybe not well defined at the moment as we were discussing the you know how to how to define the load for a particular uh, measurement and 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 you know all other things but once we will try to do this and we are doing this for uh, hyperledger aroha at the moment uh, and and see the reports then the working group can will have a material to reflect on the white paper to provide feedback uh, and and then end of the day also improve the performance of the particular platforms that are under the, the hyperledger um this is silas um my impression looking at uh, Caliper, so we added a, a fairly simple um, burrow uh, workload generation to Caliper and run that is that it's kind of fine, but the the workloads being unconstrained, it ends up being pretty arbitrary. So you end up finding a you know, simple workload that might perform well, and that doesn't really constrain things. So the, the basic metrics of the, the read latency and read throughput and stuff kind of make sense without there being a particular um, a particular problem, a particular type of workload happening, it, it's it's not very meaningful. Um, if you look at something like the uh, computer languages ben benchmarking game or something like that, that has sort of hundreds of different problems, and then you get people competing who particularly like a language to improve their implementation. So I think we're some distance off that, but I think it would be useful to if there was a, if someone could define a standardized workload that has maybe certain things that make it hard on some platforms, like some ordering requirements. So you, you can't, can't um, get away with M, uh, MVCC in some cases or whatever different properties, if we can negotiate that and then leave it down to the frameworks to implement um, their best version of that on a fixed size network, that would actually be comparing apples with apples and probably start to build a more realistic pitch. Right? I don't find the idea of just the, the metrics on their own that don't paint a very clear picture, really. Right, and what we were trying to do and have been working towards is um, as you start getting into these different verticals, um, you know, so for supply chain, there's Providence, which can apply across a bunch, but take the metrics up a level. So, you know, we think these metrics are important for supply chain and, and Provenance in particular, but so then you're starting to define some different use cases and workloads a level up from the original paper, um, and we had, you know, figured that would be the next logical step. It's just trying to uh, maintain interest in getting that done. Um, is I, is I feel, just like, I feel like use cases would be quite hard to, to achieve consistently. I was thinking more something that that is more like a, an algorithmic style problem. I mean, maybe they can be synthetic, I think, at this level. Um, you know, like, like with the, the computer benchmarking game, I'm not sure sort of the, uh, there'll be particular problems that are, are hard on a particular framework, but aren't particularly use case related, I wouldn't have thought. I and mean, I think they should be like fairly easy to implement as well, but just straight sending of transactions um, that say, you know, don't have to like share state once they get executed. Is, is, is kind of too easy. Um, having a consistent like use case, if it, you know, supply chain seems way too high level for what I was thinking. I was thinking more at like a kind of distributed algorithm type level. I, I think um, everyone should agree that uh, both performance and scalability is really important to have a ledger and even to all the open source projects. So in the community, we, we see it's a still hot topic and people talking about it a lot. So if, if it's still important, but uh, people do not want to join the activity, I, I guess there must be something wrong. I think we, we should not uh, simply shut down the working group, but uh, rather we should continue the work and we try to find how to attract more persons to join the activities. Like we can send the email to the mail list to ask the people what they want to see uh, in terms of performance and scalability. I, I did see there are some discussions related to the uh, performance numbers or 
technique reports, maybe we can consider extend at the scope. And uh, for the next step, we give some numbers or doing some real evaluation results. So I'm I'm wondering, um, and apologies, I don't recall. I think it was Vipin maybe who had suggested, you know, maybe we start with, um, uh, you know, teams submitting the, the projects, I should say, submitting um, analysis that they may have done, leveraging Caliper or something else, um, to the working group for evaluation and potentially publishing um, as informational, right? Uh, non, you know, not as, uh, you know, sort of definitive, but as informational. Um, initially, I, again, I, I I do think that we need to get to a point where we have some sort of a benchmark. Uh, that would be my, uh, you know, that would be my preference. But it, you know, in, in lieu of that, being able to have something that you know maybe we're just using the same tool chain to do that testing, and you know, with similar kinds of configurations, we can we can start down that path. Um, and I, I think to Bala's point, you know, it's, it's likely that, you know, if we have something that's actually delivering some meaning, something that's meaningful to the various projects that we may get more involvement from them. Um, and then of course we always have the problem of, you know, that Vipin is trying to do by, you know, sort of brute forcing, you know, the, the situation with the identity working group and having, you know, doing the Ironman two, two meetings a day kind of a thing. Uh, versus, I don't know, maybe just moving it around a little bit. But I know personally, I'd like to be involved. I'm actually leading the performance here for at IBM for the work we do on Fabric and, and IBM blockchain platform. But I can't attend that uh, time. Uh, I have a conflict. So, so can I just ask a, again, uh, moving up a level for a minute because I think the the concerns that Mark is expressing here are uh, are ones that apply to all of the working groups. I know the numbers that we see in the architecture working group have gone down. Um, Fipin struggling with identity, performance, some of these others. Um, it, it, is it time to step back for just a second? And um, the model that we have right now worked well at the beginning when we were in a very formulation kind of stage. Um, but the emphasis has clearly moved from um, the work in the working groups into the projects themselves. Um, I know it's, it's a little frustrating to work at times and I don't, I didn't see Ram on this morning, um, but I know he would express this as well. It's a little, frustrating to be in a role where we feel like we're doing nothing more than describing what's already being done um, in the projects rather than having some ability to do some influence. Um, the cadence of the groups being every two weeks means that it's much easier to like just not do anything and show up and work for an hour, which means that the pace at which things are being done is insanely slow. Um, is it time to kind of step back for a second and figure out exactly in general, not just for performance, but in general, what do we expect from the working groups? Do we expect them to be documentation engines that are describing what's being done? Do we expect them to actually be formulating new concepts and ideas? Are they capable of formulating new concepts and ideas better than, for example, the academic researchers who are pushing things forward or better than labs? who are doing the experimentations on it. What is the right role for working groups, uh, given the maturity of Hyperledger? Well, the, the other thing I would add to that, Mick, is um, you know there seems to be a huge growth in special interest groups. So maybe the working groups just become special interest groups. I don't know. But they seem to be thriving. The, the topic specific or application or domain specific kinds of things. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, there seems to be an explosion of, you know, and I'm not complaining, there's, there's an explosion of special interest groups. So maybe, you know, the, the, instead of this being a working group, it becomes a special interest group. I don't know. 
It, so, hey, this is Brian. Um, so the point of the working groups, um, as, as you know, I've understood them when I kind of landed in Hyperledger and they already kind of existed, was um, <clears throat> to try to get a, a, a degree of cohesion across the, the, the projects, across the, the actual development of code, right? So that you could talk about performance in a way that was not rooted, you know, entirely in how one framework chose to implement performance, but was actually a conversation across different projects. Um, and I, I, it's always been the hope that working groups create an output of some sort, you know, uh, a, a white papers as, as architecture has. Um, there was even a white paper working group once, um, I, uh, that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, but, you know, these things don't have to be evergreen. They can, they can be sunsetted, that's fine. But, but if somebody from the outside asks, well, you know, does the hyperledger community care about, you know, performance or care about a common approach to identity or, or architecture, you know, the usual answer is, well, well, you know, this would be a place to come and talk, have those cross-cutting conversations. Um, and, you know, only anything in an open source project only works to the degree that there's interest and motivation on the participants to do it. I would hope that on each project there'd be people interested in these cross-cutting issues. Um, because uh, I think being able to tell the world that, you know, these are just more than a collection of siloed kind of, you know, uh, self-starter initiatives. There's actually a, you know, somewhat of a cohesion to the Hyperledger community that this is one of the ways it manifests. Um, and to, to Mark's concern, um, this is something very distinct from the special interest groups, the, at least as um, they've evolved and, and, and we've been managing them. The SIGs are intended to the place where we uh, try to match up the technologists working on the projects with domain experts um, in, a, in a field like healthcare or supply chain uh, configuration or, or um, uh, trade finance uh, uh, and, um, and, and, you know, have, again, it can be cross project, it can be abstracted away from the project, so that we should definitely be talking about the projects and what they're doing in this case. And, and again, the output should be uh, uh, some sort of content, whether it's blog posts or maybe white papers or maybe just sharing of use cases and that sort of thing that might incidentally drive some requirements or drive interest in contributions back to the projects or even new projects. Um, but those are the difference between the SIGs and the, and the working groups. Um, uh, and my take is if, if there is momentum lost in, this, in the working groups, there's no, like, like Mick said, no shame in wrapping them up. Uh, but we should just recognize that we, we do need some forms for this cross project communication and coordination from time to time. And we shouldn't just do away with the concept of working groups. Okay, and, and maybe it's a failure on my part leading the group to, um, you know, specifically reach out to all the different projects um, that would be involved. You know, we, we've had a close working relationship with Caliper, um, given the nature of our work and the formation of the Caliper acceptance of the Caliper project. Yeah, but, no, in fact, I, if you, uh, I mean, Caliper, we, we actually held off on accepting it until we had created the performance working group because there was a desire to create, uh, a, you know, a, a kind of an abstract definition for what performance meant in a DLT context that is across things as different as fabric and sawtooth, um, you know, before kind of authorizing one particular uh, benchmarking tool, which might be, have been rooted more in one framework than the other. So, um, uh, anyways, um, and then Mark, it's not a failure on your part or anyone's part. You know, we kind of, I, I you know, we, we have to work with the interests and the, and the people who show up in the community and what, what they want to accomplish. Um, I think just making sure we get the word out, which you have been doing and by having this conversation here, this is exactly the right thing. So it's really a question back to the other 35 people on this call, you know, is talking about and having a place for performance um, across Hyperledger, across the different Hyperledger projects, important, interesting, useful, or, or not. Um, and if it's not, then we'll just wrap it up and, and find other ways to express uh, or, or have those kinds of conversations. Uh, Attila, I see your hand up. Uh, yeah, you hi, Attila here. Uh, two things really piqued my interest in this discussion. One is that uh, probably every uh, team for their own platform has some uh, performance testing done. Uh, I know this for uh, Bureau or also Iroha, we discuss this now. Uh, so I think the uh, performance working group would be a nice crossroad to uh, collect these private performance tests and uh, maybe see if some common patterns start to emerge and it might be a stepping stone towards, I don't know, cross-platform benchmarking. I know that this would help a lot uh, with Caliper uh, shaping its uh, path. So we 
try to be uh, platform independent on the workload level. But for this, we need to see how each project is performing its uh, performance testing. Uh, the other thing that's really interesting, I think, is the uh, fourth injection and fourth load kind of things. So everything is kind of boring when uh, everything is good. The interesting things happen when things start to go sideways. So for example, recovery mechanisms start to kick in, uh, crash fault tolerance, uh, Byzantine fault tolerance, etc. So uh, this could be another common view uh, among the projects uh, to, I don't know, create some scenarios how to try to intentionally crash the systems and see how they react. Okay, so we've got uh, two things that have emerged here. One is to Mark's original question. And I guess um, the, the thing that, that has resounded to me is, is getting focus in the next objective. And I think maybe the, the fastest way to do that is, Mark, for you to just take the, the lead on defining that, uh, maybe bringing that back to us here uh, as an update to the working group charter and then we can rally support around that particular objective and see if we can drive, uh, help drive participation then towards that, that new end. And then the, uh, the second issue that has emerged that, that uh, Mick is raising is the overall work group efficacy. And I think maybe that probably bears some more offline consideration and discussion before we, we have, uh, some sort of action there. Okay, and I guess the other ask I would have is for the different projects. I mean, I know Dan participated and Chris has participated in the PSWG, but what do projects want from the Performance and Scale Working Group? Because I think each of the projects sort of has their own performance work going on that's not necessarily in concert with what the PSWG is doing. So, you know, how, how can the PSWG become involved in, in different projects, I guess, is one way to look at it um, and, and help out. So maybe the project leads could think about that. Yeah, definitely. I think Mark has also done well in reaching out on the mail list on, on multiple occasions, looking for input. Um, so I think there's, uh, you know, you can only react to the uh, responses that he gets. And if, if we don't get responses there, then maybe that's a sign that uh, those aren't productive avenues to go down. All right, the, uh, the last couple things that we have probably um, require some pre-reads. Uh, and so I think we'll, we'll look for the, the taxonomy and chairs and vice chairs discussions to get introduced on the mail list first, and then we can, we can discuss those at the next meeting. Sure. Great. So I think that that brings us to a close for our agenda this week, and it looks like we'll continue to have some offline discussion on the uh, on Mark's topic, and maybe the the working groups in general. And so I invite people to participate in that on on chat. Some of that's going on in the TSC channel right now, uh, or on the mail-in list. The mail-in list is, of course, uh, preferential for or mailing list is more preferred for, for this type of discussion so that we can capture that and people that aren't available in real time can still uh, participate effectively. And with that, I think we can uh, move this meeting to a close. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye.